I'm John Lee with St. Louis Real Estate Investors Association, and we've got Jim and then Laura up there from the board. You know, we've got a bunch of other smiling faces and some some that are, I believe, are smiling behind their, behind their pictures there. And uh, anyway, um, what is today? Today is January 12th, 2024. So we're into almost two weeks into our new year. Um, I just got a couple of announcements. Uh, that I got here before we get started. Um, Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 16th, we have our main event uh, coming up at the Moolah Shrine Center at 12545 Fifi Road. We're going to be in the Oasis room, back to our normal uh, place, because uh, we were, back in, in, in November, we were displaced because of the, the Christmas holiday, so... We're back to our normal place, but we have, uh, it, actually, it's going to be really, really good. We have uh, Elizabeth uh, Watkins, who is a CPA. She's a senior manager from Ander CPA and Advisors. So she has crafted a talk specifically for us and um, in particular for landlords and property owners. So make sure that you uh, tune into that. We will have it on Zoom if, uh, if you can't make it in person, but I would recommend you make it in person if at all possible. We'll have our um, networking starting at 6.30, and then she'll be talking about 7 o'clock is when her presentation will come on. She has put together some stuff just specifically for our group, so that ought to be very, uh, very good. Then, um, let's see, February, we have Chris Kleewine. On, that's on the 20th. He'll be talking about wholesaling. He's been a longtime member of our group. Um couple other things in now in March uh March 19th we do have Brad Sumrock he's the uh the apartment king is what he goes by now um if you don't know anything about him I would highly recommend that you maybe um mark that on your calendars he takes things in a little different approach than most of us do as investors he was actually an engineer for many many years and he quit um I don't know probably it's been about I don't know, 15 years now since he retired, since he he quit his day job. But he quit. It was like uh, he was making probably $160,000, $180,000 a year, and he quit that job. But he does everything on a scientific approach. In fact, he's doing the forecast, uh, real estate forecast, coming up on the 31st at 7 p.m. Uh, if you'd like a link to that, just... Uh, I think we'll be sending out an email on that, but if you'd like a link to that, just put in the chat that you would, and I'll make sure you get one, because I would highly recommend that you uh, listen to Brad. Very interesting guy. I first ran into him, I don't know, maybe 10 years or more ago at a Rich Dad Poor Dad event with Robert Kiyosaki. He was the uh, he was the apartment guy because of the way he he approaches everything and does it. And um, then I recently ran into him at uh, with one of my coaches, um, Joe Bauer, and who does uh, presentations and things. And um, Brad's come a pretty long way. He's not a, really a personal friend of mine, but he's somebody that I really respect and and uh, listen to. And I, I, you know, I would just uh, think it'd be a good idea for all of us to take a look at it, because even if you don't invest in apartments, like I personally don't, you can learn a lot of good things from Brad. And with the forecast coming up this year, that'll be very interesting. Um, just to see. And then he's doing a special presentation for us on the 19th of March. He does have a two-day event. Uh, I think it's called Weekend of Wealth in Dallas. Now, that's in February. I don't know. Um, you know, that's very limited. He's got a VIP event down there. It's for like a, only like 100 people, I think is what it, if I remember right. But he'll be talking more about that. Um, let's see here. What else? We got the Moolah Shriner Circus coming up March 21st through our uh, 21st through 24th. So mark your calendars for that. We will have some free tickets. Um, I just got done this morning updating our coloring book and we're going to have more coloring books, our STL RIA coloring books like we did last year. So we got some more um, more things in there. Our pictures are about all the same as far as the coloring goes. Mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, some of the other things are, have been updated. Uh, you can always get a free version on the website, stlreia.com, but uh, a printed copy, you'll have to get that from um, from Amazon or Kindle. As, as soon as that's approved, um, it normally takes about 24 hours. Uh, you can still get the other one. Um, and we just have those for cost. Um, I think the cost was around eight, eight or ten dollars, something like that. So, but it's like 207 pages, so it's quite a quite a big thick book for the kids. And we'll have some free ones to give away for kids and for 
those who have kids, maybe, or anybody that was ever a kid, I guess. <laughs> so if you like the color, there's some good stuff in there. Um, let's see. I think that's all I have. Oh, I one more thing as our lunch is uh, on February 5th. They're going back to the networking lunch. Um, at Applebee's right at Olive and 270. So there'll be more information about that on the uh, website, of course, with everything else. So uh, did I miss anything, Jim or Laura? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I think, think you covered it all. It's, uh, pretty, uh, pretty comprehensive to me. Okay. Well, I got just a couple of notes and I think that's it. Um, don't really have anything more other than um, I think I've seen Ann there, Ann Bearden, and I do want to thank you for the referral for the grass cutter for Darian. He's going to be out in my place in Hazelwood tomorrow because that's been a little, I don't know, with the weather and everything, that's been a little tougher, but I appreciate that very much. And he seems like a good guy. Maybe we can get him to talk to our group here at some point. Oh, yeah, sure, John. Sorry, I'm I'm driving now, so I'm just kind of <laughs> listening. But, yeah, I'm glad uh, it worked out for you. That's great. Yeah, very nice guy. So okay. thank you very much. Okay. Okay. And um, I think that's it. I guess, uh, Laura, do you want to give us our disclaimer and then we can uh, we can get started here? Sure. Good morning and welcome, everyone. First, I'd like to do a bit of housekeeping. Feel free to unmute yourself when it's your turn to speak. Please be mindful of everyone else by muting yourself while others are speaking. You're welcome to put any contact information that you want to share into the chat. We meet here to share deals, Look for deals and solutions we have and need with our real estate. We are not your financial advisors, attorney, or accountants. We do not endorse or recommend any specific solutions or contractors here. You're advised to do your own due diligence to your own satisfaction before you invest. The first Friday of each month is normally Ask the Attorney with Ms. Catherine Davis. Our meetings are typically recorded, so only share what you want others to know. Thank you, Laura. Okay, um, Melissa, you said you'd like a invite to the meeting. Which one? Which meeting are you talking about? Are you talking about uh, to Brad's? Yes. Yes, yes absolutely. The, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. I will. I will make sure you get a link. I'll send you one out today. And Thank uh, you. yeah, that's, that's my that's, one of my goals this year is to. Uh, connect with a few apartment complexes. So the more I can learn about that, the better off we'll all be. <laughs> well, one, yeah, one thing that I really like about Brad is, um, is he has different ways you can invest. You could be, you can be a passive investor, which a lot of people do. They just want to put money in there and get their, you know, 10, 10% a year or whatever, and never touch anything. You can be somebody that goes out and finds the deals. And that's what I really like is the way he set that up for a lot of new people. Maybe you might even be, in fact, I, I personally think it's uh, better if you are a little bit green, if you don't know anything about investing, because you don't have any preconceived notions, because he's really good at getting you out there and doing that. Because there's a lot of people that, um, that just want to get out there and get started, but they don't know what to do. And then he has kind of some, uh, like a in-between um uh, for in between people too that want to do a little bit of both. So uh, I, you'll get a lot out of Brad. He does it, like I said, he does it a little bit differently than anybody I've ever seen. It's more of a scientific approach. He takes the engineering approach, you know, kind of to investing, which uh, a lot of us don't do that. So, so that's, uh, yeah, if you would, uh, yeah, if anybody would like to link, yeah, just put it in there. I'll make sure you get that one. Again, um, any of the other meetings with the RIA group, just go to the regular website and that'll be on there. I don't know if any of Brad thing, Brad's things are on there yet. We just kind of got him committed last in the last week or so. And I was working on some of that that this morning. So I just got our uh, our STL RIA link. So I'll send that out to you this afternoon. So, okay. Yeah, a couple of people. Yeah, I'll make sure you get, you get those, Sierra and Eric. Okay, anybody have anything they'd like to buy or sell today? I guess we can start there. Anybody have anything they would like to sell? People are looking for things. Anybody have anything they'd like to buy? All right, well, is anybody working on anything? <laughs> that they'd like help with or just uh, maybe just have a question or comment or anything.
I know I, I was personally in uh, it, kind of an interesting, just a little side note, but I was, uh, you know, Ann gave me the, uh, Ann Bearden gave me the referral for the grass cutter. I was in court yesterday over in Hazelwood, which is very interesting. I haven't been there in a few months. Uh, we had a house, I won't get into the long story, but it was one I got back and they didn't take care of the yard. So I, uh, we were working on that a little bit. Well, this, the city, the, you know, the, um, the inspectors, they, they kind of drive around and look for things. So we had to go into court yesterday. Well, one of the things that I found, which I hadn't done, I haven't been, you know, dealt with any of the inspectors in many years because we do things a little bit differently now. And um, just by making friends with the person, though, I've kind of formed a relationship over the last month or so. And she actually got me a, a, a like a continuance from court in in um, December because I was kind of out of town. But just by talking to her and making a little, being a little friendly, kind of working back and forth, she did that. She was able to do that for me. And then when I was there yesterday, she was very nice. Even though my grass was not all the way cut, she she told the judge that I had been working on it and there was no need to come back for that violation. So all I had to do was actually pay my $70 fine. And then, um, it, and, you know, it was just, it was so much better than half the people I seen in there because the place was crowded. I don't know. I think they saved everything up for January uh, is what I think. And I mean, there was so many, so many cases in there and the property violations. I know um, we've talked about this before is that's a, you know, a lot of people think that's like a money grab for a lot of the municipalities, which I'm not so sure it's not because they're not making money on some of the other things that they used to just because of all the things going on. But um, and I I thought seventy dollars was pretty inexpensive for them to go away, <laughs> so <laughs> that was a, a pretty good thing. But the the point was just to to be friendly to him because I know a lot of the the inspectors and some of the people they're they're not always treated that nice because it's kind of a friction point anyway. You know when you when uh, when they when you get a violation, the first thing you want to do is is kind of react to it rather than see what I can do to help and work on the things. But the whole idea is. Um, you know, I, w I went over there and I did some of the, this back a uh, couple months ago, but I did some of the trimming myself on the fence line, but there's stuff I can't do in the, in the grass cutting. I don't even own a lawnmower anymore. I went out and actually bought a used one just so I could cut it one time, which I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go into that business at this point in my life. I mean, we're place we're building, we're out in the woods. I don't, I'm rock, putting rock all the way around the house and around the garage because I don't want to cut anything, you know, so the uh, what we're, we're going to build a, uh, um, a greenhouse, actually, our grow house to have our stuff in there that I want to grow and mess with. I do not want to be a lawn person. So it's actually invaluable to network and get some people that want to do that because there's some people really good at that stuff. I mean, they can go out there and do that. But that's the kind of thing, though, that you can network with. But the, you know, uh, when you come here are. But the, the point about the inspector is just, you know, they're not always out to get you. But they, they do deal with a lot of people that are not very nice to them. So you kind of have to think, you know, look at it, at least the way I looked at it is, is what they were, you know, what they're going through. And I even the day before I went to court, I just kind of called up, left a message. I didn't think she'd answer, but I was ready to talk to her. I just left her a message saying, you know, I, I appreciated her help and, you know, working with me on all this stuff. And I will I do have the grass cut setting, you know, cutting set up for Saturday. I said I couldn't get the guy out there any sooner, but I'm an, I will be in court you know, don't avoid it. And I showed up and she was just really nice the way she uh, just talked about me and, in, in, you know, in the company and everything. Because one of the things they're doing, I know in the city, and this is going on with a lot of places, is with LLCs and companies, S Corps or whatever, there's really nobody to be held accountable, you know, and that's one of the things they're trying to change is have an actual person they can call. So when they do have a person they can call and you're just not trying to avoid them, I think that goes a long way. So Anyway, that's my little two cents on my court appearance and the inspectors for the day. They're all different. One size doesn't fit all. Yeah, John, with the, uh, the beginning of the new year, sorry to break in, Jim, uh, uh, pertinent to what John was just saying about LLCs, and I'm not completely familiar with it, but I listened to John Heyer talk about it a month or so ago, and then there was a, a, a SCORE SBA webinar yesterday about another attorney from Ohio who was talking about the uh, new Transparency Act, or rather that the Transparency Act started up January 1st, where we have to fill out a form to uh, an organization called SINFIN, which is a government organization, and uh, have to tell uh, 
uh, who the person is. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, uh, regs for that, that if you're 25% or more interested in an LLC or managing partner or some other things for LLCs, corporations, that you have to fill out a federal form and name the people who are involved. So this LLC thing won't hide you possibly from the uh, city or township organizations anymore. I don't know if they're all going to have complete access to the federal forms or not. Uh, but now you can't hide behind an LLC, supposedly. But it's only available, uh, and it's my understanding, I could be wrong, that it's available to judges, police, uh, IRS and government officials. So yeah. the governments can find out, but maybe the, uh, you know, the tenants and all them still can't find out. Uh, I'll try to find that link uh, from uh, yesterday and send it on, but uh, just in case other people haven't heard about that yet. Is on your, uh, on your list. Okay. Uh, Yeah, thank, thank you, Bruce. Yeah, that was something um, I know Kathy didn't know anything about that. And Roger, the attorney, we had a couple months, wasn't familiar with that either. And um, Jim, I think we're going to mute you here. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you. And um, that's something they were going to find out. Kathy, Catherine Davis, who is our attorney that's normally on the first Friday of the month, and she's been on uh, vacation. She's been on a cruise and don't want to hear from anybody until she gets back, which shouldn't be any time now. But she'll be back and, and uh, we'll be sure to ask her about that. But I know there's some things that are changing. Uh, some of the other attorneys say there's really nothing different than uh, it's just another uh, another another thing we have to do as business owners but um that is something that we will definitely want to know about so anybody have anything they're working on you know we should have a lot of projects going on i know uh we got a few of them here ourselves but <clears throat> a lot of a lot of things going on we're getting ready to do this year we got a, a lot of things planned um, I, I personally think it's going to be a really good year for investors. Um, you know, a lot of people are kind of waiting to see what's what's going on. There's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines that I see right now. And people don't know whether to buy stuff, whether to sell stuff. And there's a lot of things going on. But one thing I do know is there's still people that, uh, you know, we're still in the real estate business. There's still people that need to buy and sell. And situations change. Uh, you know, I was uh, seen a thing this morning where um, you know they were saying some of the divorces are up i don't know what the stats really are but this guy was particularly talking about ways that he helps people with divorce situations because they're they're rarely good situations I, I i've yet to hear of a really good one you know i mean there's never something really great on there but there's there's a lot of things that go on with real estate and um people need to buy and sell People still die. There's a lot of people that, you know, none of us get out alive and there's stuff that we have to do with our real estate. We were actually talking about beneficiary deeds again the other day, because that's something that we're getting ready to do. I, I like beneficiary deeds because you can transfer your real estate to somebody else upon your death without it going through probate without going through wills or anything else it's just instantly done and um, it doesn't really cost anything to do that plus they're revocable let's say that laura and i get mad at um at our heirs down the road and we want to change it to somebody else you could do that so it's they're not they are revocable but that's something i've seen it save a lot of people a lot of uh, a lot of grief and a lot of uh, a lot of problems down the road because <clears throat> and the way I actually came across it was many years ago, um, just in, in the mortgage business when, um, well, you know, we did a lot of, a lot of, uh, we did a lot of loans and things for it might be just for a good example maybe a single mother and she might have three or four children and they're typically there's one that's responsible especially when they're growing up now when they're adults it might be a little different but there'd be one that might be more responsible than the other ones uh one one's a bad seed almost always and then a couple of them are just okay and they don't care about business but there's usually one that will take care of the rest of the family and so what we would do is we'd set up the uh, a beneficiary deed so that so it would transfer to the uh, responsible responsible child or whoever she decided, you know, or they decided. And um, that's just something I, I would recommend you looking at if you have not done that. So, or if you don't know about that, it's definitely worth checking out. Hey, John. Yes. Uh, I'll start this off. Um, I want everybody to know my name's Jay Roman 
and I'm a private money lender. And I specialize in fix and flips, uh, fix and keeps, and refi and reboot borrowers. Uh, so uh, once again, you can contact me at j at romannationwidehouses.com. Uh, or you can call me at 636-462-0246. Uh, I'll actually put my information in the chat if anybody wants to contact me. Thank you, Jay. And I still I see you still haven't got an uh, unscary picture there. <laughs> no, 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 that's 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 me. That that's live picture. I'm just frozen that's in live. time. Yes. Well, I'm maybe just we, in time. We might want to make a sketch of that and put it in our coloring book. Scare the kids. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Anybody anybody else have anything they'd like to share with us today? We got a good group here and there's a. I know a lot of people come in here as a fly on the wall, and I encourage you to do that too, because there's a lot of good good things we learn here. And this is a good, safe place to come and talk to people. Um, there's really no no dumb questions. People always, you know, I, I run into that with other groups I'm in too. People worry about, talk, you know, asking a dumb question. And I'll tell you, honestly, most of the time, other people are thinking that anyway. You know, there's other people that just maybe are not even clear, even if they know stuff. So... If you got a question or anything you're working on, if you need any, uh, if you're looking for contractors, this is always a good place to get referrals too. Um, I'm Sarah. Hi. Um, this is my first time getting on here um, and I'm a total newbie. So I've kind of been a fly on the wall, but um, just recently leaving a career in pharma and medical device. My husband's a contractor. We've uh, flipped a few houses over the last 20 years. Um, so just kind of trying to learn the ropes and wrap my head around things. So if anybody has any good tips or mentors or educational programs, um, I'm all ears. So. Well, thank you. And welcome, Sarah. Um, it, what part of uh, town or what part of the country are you in? So I'm um, in the Kirkwood area, just off 270 and Big Bend is where we live. So. Oh, okay. Well, I'd encourage you to come out and, to our meeting next week. Uh, that's on the 16th at the Moolah Shrine Center. And if you and your husband are able to come out, um, it's it's always good for networking. And we have a nice uh, a nice group of people. And we we are a nonprofit. We're, we've been around since 1977. So even us board members, we pay the same $75 a year that you guys pay to be, you know, to be a member of the group. And I, I tell you, honestly, we get so much out of it, too. I've been a member now, I don't know, in my second decade, I guess, in a volunteer, probably going on a little over a decade now. And I don't know why we keep doing it, but we do. <laughs> but a lot of it is just because we have such good people here and everybody comes from a good place. So we do encourage you to use your own due diligence. Um, you know, as far as checking people out, but, th but this is a good place to, um, uh, you know, to network and what, what type of work you said your husband is a contractor. He does. Yeah. He has his own small business. He does a lot of, uh, renovations, um, kind of high end stuff, but also a little, um, a few new builds. Um, so. Okay. Very nice. Does, um, is there anything in particular that he specializes in that you guys do? Not necessarily. Um, he's got a number of kind of high end customers, so kind of mm -hmm. a concierge sort of business um, and has a really great finished carpenter that does some high end stuff. Um, so they do a lot of really custom work. Um, so that's kind of, I guess, their specialty, but, um, you know, has a, a number of clients in Ladue and Clayton, um, but then, you know, does a little bit of everything. So nice. OK, well, if you'd like to share information, if he's looking for any more business, you can feel free to do that here, too. Um, okay. I, I normally recommend you do it uh, verbally for people watching the replay and then if, uh, also in the chat. So if anybody wants to write it down while they're here, too, because we we do put the replays up on the uh, member side. We put them on, on YouTube, too, but you can always find them organized on the uh, member side of STL RIA. So. Okay. Well, his his name is Zach, Zach Bevins. Um, his business is Bevins Renovations. 
Um, his number is 314-221-4105. Okay. Thank and we you. are signed up for uh, next week. So maybe we'll meet you there. Great. Look forward to seeing you. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, John, I'm not sure if you mentioned it. I didn't hear it, but uh, first, uh, first meeting is free. The first meeting is free. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And if you choose to become a member, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but it's only $75 a year for two people at the same address, uh, whether it's, you know, spouses or business partners or whatever the case is. So it's very inexpensive. Plus, you you probably see we're having a CPA next week. It would be tax deductible as a professional service. So you know, it's, that's always good to know. I know I, per, we, you know, Laura and I personally do everything, um, just about everything is business. Um, you know, it's about 75% business, 25% personal. And that's what we decided with our CPAs years ago. And that keeps a nice balance because that's really realistically. I know, Jim, you said you're down in Florida right now. Hopefully you're taking that as a mostly business trip too. Uh, I'll see what I can do to make it. I'm not sure if I can uh, do it though. Go look, do some market research, look at some properties for sale, talk to some people. There's there's all kinds of ways. My company used to require me to have a uh, a board meeting on the on the beach every year, and I was the only managing member. So well, uh, my, my brother and I uh, you know, do do note stuff. So maybe I'll uh, I can I can do that then. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, go have a business meeting. Uh, go out for lunch. Uh, discuss some notes. Look at some deals. I mean, there, there's a lot of things to make your trip, uh, you know, a business trip. Even though you're going to be doing personal things, that's one reason that uh, the CPAs we worked with years ago, we just decided on seventy five twenty five because I and we still do this today. But I would go on a trip, maybe to Los Angeles or somewhere else. And it would be a business trip, but you are going to do some personal things while you're there. So the formula we've we've figured out that worked for me. Now you'll have to check with your own CPA and your own advisors, but uh, it was seventy five twenty five, and we still use that model today. And that never draws any red flags as far as I mean, it's not that it couldn't, but it doesn't. And that's pretty much a good rule of thumb for us. So, and that's one thing you might be able to talk to Elizabeth about uh, Elizabeth Watkins about on Tuesday. Um, you know, she's, she's customizing the talk strictly for investors, just for our group, which will be, I think it'd be fantastic. I really like, I've talked to her only a couple of times and I really like what she's, uh, what she said and what, she, you know, where she comes from, what she's done. So I think we'll, we'll learn a lot. Even if, uh, even if you are a CPA, I would, or an attorney, I would recommend coming too. Okay. Sounds good. I'll be there. Okay. You'll be back in town, Jim. Yeah. I get back Monday. Oh, good. Okay. All right, what, what part of Florida are you in? I think you told me. I don't remember. I'm in St. Augustine area. St. Augustine. Okay. Very nice. Yeah, I got to be there. I got to bring the checkbook for you for the circus. Oh, and that reminds me to fill out the... Uh... The application they gave us to, yeah, this the circus. If you do, if you weren't able to go last year, I would definitely put it on the list. It's um, out at the family uh, arena or family center, whatever it's called, out in St. Charles. Very, very nice. I mean, they did a uh, they they did a good job. I hadn't been to the circus since I was a uh, child, and um, it was it was a lot of fun. Last year they had a. a a thing for the kids to get all the autographs from the clowns. I don't know if they're playing that this year, but we had our six-year-old grandson. But he once he figured out that you know the clowns were to get signatures from, he just flocked to them like all the other kids, and it it was actually more fun. I think watching the kids chase the clowns around than anything. They they all were different, different, and dressed up different from all parts of the country, and actually I think from from different. Uh, couple of different places from different countries too, but it's a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun watching them. There's, there's a lot of good talent too. I mean, the people at the circus are, uh, it's not like me trying to walk the tight wire, you know, it's people that can actually do it. So, <laughs> uh -oh. so anyway, so if you, yeah, if you could all make it and we're going to have some free tickets, I know, um, I don't know how many sets we're going to have, but you, you know, watch, uh, uh, watch your emails and things. We'll and we'll have more on that as we yeah, probably after Tuesday after we get our uh, paperwork in, and we will have some free coloring books, some things like that. I know they usually offer um, 
free admission to children, I believe under, I want to say under 12, but don't hold me to that. I'm not positive about that. If you just go to the website without having, uh, um, you know, a pass from us, uh, but they do offer like one free child's ticket per, uh, per household. So you can always do that, but we will have some, also have some free tickets. Uh, they're not really free. We're, we're buying them, but we will have them free to give out to, to some of the members. So, so make sure you do that. And when Brad's talking to our group on the 19th of uh, March too, we will have, have those to give away. So we we'll, should have our new coloring books by then also. We'll have some hard copies that we're going to be um, giving out to some of the kids, some of the members. And then of course you can always go to, uh, it should be on Amazon by then if you want to if you want to purchase some too. So anyway, so that's uh, that's some exciting stuff coming up. Okay, anybody have anything else they'd like to share with us today? Kind of a quiet day. Everybody waiting for the weather. Supposedly we got coming in the St. Louis area here. I know it's supposed to get cold. That's the only thing I don't care for. I don't care for anything else other than the cold. That's not as much fun as it could be. That's when we typically could have uh, issues with pipes and a lot of other fun things. If you're not prepared, um, I'd get out there today and make sure that uh, you have everything ready for a, for a cold snap so you don't have snap pipes. <laughs> hey, John, I have a question for you. Sure, John. I know you talk sometimes about coaching. And I guess, how would you go about like maybe vetting a coach to see if, you know, it's somebody that that's probably worth working with? Um, I know, at least to me, sometimes a person could be successful at their business, but doesn't necessarily make uh, mean that, you know, they could do the same for you or, or pass that same information on. So I was just wondering, did you have like a process to, to know if it was worth it or not? Well, there's not really a process where you can follow a, you know, follow like a prescription, but there, yeah, there are definite ways. Uh, what, what in particular are you looking for, John? Are you looking for something that, um, what, I guess what aspect, what, uh, uh, just kind of maybe grow my business, uh, help me as far as, uh, purchasing new rentals, you know, uh, that we have in process if I want to flip them in the end or either keep it as a rental. Yeah, sure. There, there's some good stuff out there. I would recommend, you know, I, I personally, and I've talked about this, I've spent, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on trainings and coaches and mentors. And um, not all of them are great deals. Some of them are fantastic deals. You know, some of the best ones I ever had uh, is from uh, some of the ones that maybe didn't cost me as much. Um, the main thing is, is if you can relate to the person, um, I mean, you kind of get a feel for that. Um, I can send you a couple of uh, links just to some things to get you started, John. If you want to send me a just an email, you know, a quick message, and I'd be happy to send you a couple things, uh, you know, just to kind of get you started on that. But really, you just have, you know, there's not one size that fits all. It's just what works for you. And that's one reason I kind of ask, you know, want to know where, where you're coming from. I know you can get a lot of the stuff out of, uh, you know, for stuff for free. There's everything you Everything is out there right now. We're, we have information overload, but the key, and I know it is for me, is I do better learning from someone I can relate to. Like when I first started, you know, and, and I've talked about him before, Robert Allen is one of my friends and mentors. He's turned into my friend. Most of the best coaches are not your friends going into it. And there's a, there is a big difference in mentors and in coaches. OK, um, I found that out. I used to kind of think that they were one and the same, but that's not uh, not the case at all. The best coaches I have today um, are not my friends and they will tell me what I don't want to hear, whether I want to hear it or not. I mean, they just come through and and tell you this is the way it is. But that's the best advice. And I know, you know, a lot of us, we have an ego. We go in there thinking, you know, uh, my way is to, you know, I, I know this stuff already. And that's like, that's like the three worst things you could ever tell yourself is I know that three worst words. Yeah. Because once you do, your brain shuts down. You know, I've learned that from one of my, uh, one of my coaches, Harbecker, T. Harbecker many years ago, is that's one of the things he says. And a lot of us, especially when we've been in the business for a while too. And that's one reason, like even talking about Brad Sumrock, I have to kind of just stop, forget everything I know, and just go in there with an open slate. 
you know, and just be accepting, forget everything I already know about everything and go in there like I'm a brand new person to learn. And that's one of the things, John, with the, with the coaches and with the mentors that, um, that I look at today, it's like, well, what can I actually learn? Because it doesn't matter what I know. What I know got me to where I am right now, but that's not going to get me to where I want to be. So in your case, if you're wanting to grow your business and may, maybe, um, you know, pick up more rental properties or something like that, a good place to start is what your personal goals is, is what do you want to do in this next year? Now, you know, I was on, a, you know, where I'm in a lot of groups and one of the things they were, they're looking at with leaders, um, you know, a leadership group I'm in the other day is they look at the 10 year goal and then a three year goal and then a one year uh, set of goals. Okay. And, and goals, the, the, the thing with the goals is, is most of the time they don't work, you know, because there's just so many variations and things that happen as we go along. Like you can, you can say to yourself, I want to add on 10 rental properties this year. Okay. I like to use 10, even though we have 12 months, because that always gives me a two month variation for things that can happen. But then you have to remember, you have to adjust and continue because you might get all of a sudden, if, you're, if your goal is to have 10 rentals this year, you might get, you know, it might go real good. You'll get one a month for the first three months. Then you might get five right away. Then all of a sudden you're going to get a dog that, that's really hard to, uh, really, you know, really hard to, to deal with. And it might take you three or four or five more months. You might run into problems with the city. You might run into, you know, I, I mean, there's a million things that can go wrong as we, as we know, because you never know, especially when you're rehabbing properties, you never know really what you're getting into until you get into it, you know, and you, you know, there's always, uh, you know, there's always uh, the best possible uh, scenario, the worst possible scenario. And then the most likely, I like to base my stuff on the worst thing that can go wrong now. I didn't always do that. Most of us as real estate investors only look at the best of everything. And that's not really how it works most of the time. So as far as as mentors and coaches go, though, you have to see where you're at and where you want to go. And I, I like to start with the goals and then go from there and then see who I relate to. You know, my my uh, my mentor, Robert Allen, he's somebody that did the original nothing down. <clears throat> he had like 50, um, 50 different strategies for that. Well, when I started many years ago, it was exactly what I had, nothing, you know. So what I learned from him is how to put deals together. And I still do that today is, you, you know, there's so many more deals that you can do without money than there is with money. Um, obviously, you want to get yourself in line so you can buy properties. I know... Um, I don't believe Carrie's here today, but she, you know, she's talked about, you know, that she works for New Frontier Bank over in St. Charles there. And she talks about how, you know, working with investors and the things you can do right there. But we also talked about funding a couple of weeks ago on how to present your deals to people with money because there's plenty of money. Well, there's a lot of people that just need their problems solved. And that's what I've learned over the years, which I originally got from, from my mentor, Robert Allen, is how to, uh, you know, how to do the deals. And it's really just figuring out being a problem solver. There's so many people. Um, I learned a lot of stuff back in the uh, the downturn, you know, 2006, seven, eight, right. And then when everything was crazy and people were upside down on their properties, well, we started, you know, a lot of people were coming to us. We didn't know what to do because you can't pay off their loan. That's when I learned I don't need my money to do everything with. What I ended up doing was just figure out how to make the deals cash flow. And you can you can make stuff cash flow without, you know, without money and without there's all kinds of ways you can do it without getting into too deep because that's a whole, you know, that's a whole weekend in itself. But there's like 12 different ways to make money and create win-win-win situations when people owe way more money on their house than they can get for it. So, and I do that same process today when I sell stuff. You know, I usually have, when I'm doing my owner financing, I have a cash price, I have a financing price, and you know, that, that's just kind of how we do it. And my, you know, people, a lot of times will say, well, you're, you know, there's no way I'd pay you, you know, two and a half times what the retail value is on your house. Well, people go by payments and my, my, you know, not everybody is my customer anyway, it has to be for the right person. So we, we do that within the, the way the cash flow works and within payments. And then there's also ways they can win out of the deal. I mean, I'm that house I was talking about in Hazelwood, we're working on that right now. It needs maybe, you know, a pretty, pretty much almost a total rehab, but I'm getting somebody else to do that. The things I do today, which I've learned out of from my mentors and coaches is, you know, stuff I don't do anymore. It used to be 10 years ago or 12 years ago, I would have went in there and put all my money into the house. Today, I'm looking for what I call a profit sharing partner. Okay. And that's what I've, I've found with a lot of people. We can all be 
profit sharing partners, you know, have partnerships on some of this kind of stuff. Not everybody's your partner, but there's uh, good ways to to do a lot of these things to, to where we all win, win, win. Because everybody has to win or I'm not even going to do the deal. If one person loses, it's not worth it. And, you know, you can run your business any way you want. And I've seen a lot of people do it, but that has to be number one, you know, if you're going to stay in business too. So. Okay, thanks. Appreciate does that help at all, John? Yeah, it does. Yeah, thanks. I'll send you a couple links to some things I think might be helpful for you. Oh, thank you. I just sent you a message. Thanks. Okay, great. And I'll get to it today. Thank you, John. Uh, John Lee and John Collins. I'd uh, also recommend that John Collins come to the meetings at the February with with Chris, mm -hmm. because Chris, even though it's wholesaling, he does sometimes have a lot of good ideas on finding properties. So I think that'd be a really good meeting for uh, Mr. Collins to be at. Yeah, I know, Chris. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be at that. Okay, great. And that, that's a good point too, Jim, because here the thing is, we talk about funding. Everybody thinks they need money. The biggest thing they need is how to find deals. You know, peop, that's the number one thing I see. I don't care, you know, what group I'm in. People always think they need funding or know how. It, what it is, is you need to know how to find the deals. And that's, you know, that's number one. It keeps going back to that. If you can find out, if you can figure that out, because it really, in, in all honesty, it's probably only one out of every 100 is really a deal that I see. And because there's plenty of money, there's, uh, if in fact, uh, going back to wholesaling, like uh, like with Chris uh, Kleewine, he's one of the masters in St. Louis. I, I highly recommend coming to that meeting also, Jim, um, because he knows, you know, we've known Chris for a few years now, and he, you know, he is really good at finding the deals. And that's what, that's what it, that's what key is. If you can, if you could come up with one skill, that would be finding the deals. I would highly recommend that. Because that, that'll get you further than anything else because the money is always there. If you put a wholesale deal, you bring one here, or if you bring one, you know, put one up in one of the groups, bring one for sale that you have under contract. Now, it's not not a listed property, obviously. The ones on the MLS, they're usually, that's by the time they get there, they're usually not a bargain. They're not always a bad deal, but that's not where you're going to find the great deals. You need to find one. And if your deal is not bought within a week, you probably don't have a good deal. Okay, it's probably not a bargain. Uh, th that's true. And that's where a lot of new investors, uh, could get with hard money lenders or other, like you said, there's money out there. And, you know, you think it's a deal. If they say it's not a deal, it's not a deal. And hopefully people will learn, uh, why it's not a deal. And hopefully in the future, they'll, uh, they'll be able to get, to find deals. Yes. And, and one of the things that goes right along with that, which Chris will be talking about, which he's really good at, is estimating the repairs. That's one of the hardest things, even for really seasoned people, is estimating repairs. Because most of the time, they're not what you think they are. You, you know, even the people that think they know things, once you tear out the wall or once you do this or once you find out that the previous investor did not get the right permits and threw the wall back together. And the inspectors remember that I've had houses. I bought, like I bought uh, two houses together one time down Deloge and we got it all ready. And as soon as I had the inspector out, he goes, Oh, well they, the last guy didn't fix this, 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 and this, he had five or six things he put on there. And then he was kind of mad at me. Well, I didn't know that. I did not know he did that. And that's in fact, that was one of the reasons he sold me the house houses at a discount because he did not fix some of the electric so we had to go back in there and kind of fix some of that stuff that's some of the stuff you don't always know so you've got to figure you know you've got to take all that into consideration you know one of the things we look at is and another thing that's really hard to figure out for a lot of us is arvs you know after repair values because you don't know what you're getting into and what is it really i mean if you went back last summer in some of the neighborhoods compared to today, you're going to have a completely different ARV because some of the values have adjusted somewhat. The market has changed. Okay. Um, in, in fact, we, uh, we, we have a, um, we have just a little Excel spreadsheet actually that Laura put together for us that shows that. In fact, if you want one of them, I'd be happy to send you one. You can just plug in your numbers and it'll tell you whether you got a deal or not. I base it at 65%. You can do it however you want. 
And then I try to back it off from there. Most of the people you run into, that's not the deal you're going to get. But see, that's why we do other things too. There's still, you know, no money necessarily needs to change hands because you can still get in there and make deals with people and go, come up and make a good win-win scenario for people by by working the deals on paper. So that's something that, um, you know, that's something. But if you'd like a copy of that or uh, one of those those uh, them sheets that I got, feel free to send me a, a note or just put it in the chat. I'll be happy to send you one of them too uh, later. It's a deal analyzer is what it is. Now that gets into where you'll need to know somewhat about repairs and things like that, or what you estimate the cost to be, but it will give you um, what you should offer for the properties. It's really a good, uh, a good analyzer. So I'd be happy to give you one of those. Okay. Does anybody have anything they're actually working on <laughs> today? Anything they'd like to buy, sell, anything they need uh, that they're they're wanting about, to know about? I know a good grass cutter now. If you guys need any <laughs> any yard work this time of year. Hey, John. How's it going? Good. How are you, Blake? Doing well. Doing well. Hey, everyone. Um, I this is. I'm just gonna preface this by saying it's. I am not officially under contract yet. Um, but, but I had a walkthrough on Monday for a duplex that I was, my investor and I, we were looking at, and it turns out it was actually a full gut rehab and the seller didn't disclose, it was off market. I actually got the lead myself, um, didn't disclose to me that it was a full gut rehab. We're probably, the rehab's honestly just south of six figures. So it's, it's a pretty big project on a duplex. Um, I would say ARV is about 250 and I was thinking about just assigning a contract. So, like I said, I'm I'm officially not on you know under contract with him. It's been sent out over DocuSign. So as soon as um, I get it back from his end, um, I would I would be willing to you know sign the contract if anybody would by chance be interested. Um, we are in the south. It's it's about one block south of Arsenal, um, Tower Grove South neighborhood. Um, it's it's a great location. It's kind of um, adjacent from the Seven Eleven off of. Let me think it would be Arsenal and I'm forgetting the other street, but it, it's a pretty walkable neighborhood, um, you know, de decent neighborhood. It's just it's definitely going to be a, a solid two to three month six figure rehab. It's it's in pretty bad shape. OK, and uh, what what did you estimate the ARV to be, uh, Blake? Uh, I would I would say ARV on the high end is probably two. Yeah, probably two fifty um maybe 240 ballpark okay so it's, okay it's not, it's got some potential as like a burr strategy um or if you're a flipper um you know it just it just didn't fit my strategy and my my partner needs to cash flow sooner than three months so that's the okay. only reason i'm not making a move on it All right and would you like to give us your contact information blake yeah. if you don't mind verbally and in the chat would be great yeah uh blake silverman 636 Four eight nine, eight three five three, and I will put my email into the chat. I'm not going to give you a mouthful. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, John, John Collins, there's a maybe a, a possible one for you. You're looking for some rental properties. Uh, two families are are uh, they can they can be good cash flows if they're done the right way. Is that the 7-Eleven near Arsenal and McCausland, Blake? Is it way out west, almost to the west edge of the city? Sorry, I was on mute. Let me yeah, just... is, is that the 7-Eleven near McCausland? Is it, or is, is no, there another 7-Eleven somewhere? Information. Let me just pull it up real quick. Yeah. I think this storm is making my Wi-Fi a little slow. <laughs> it's rain coming in.
All right. Yeah, there's a couple of people on the deal analyzer. I'll be happy to send that out to you. So I'll do that. And then uh, and I'll so also send you the link for uh for Brad Summerock today too. That's something I would I would highly recommend everybody watch his uh, forecast. I have the last two years and he's pretty much right on what's going on with the market. And like I said, he's a does things on more of a scientific uh uh viewpoint than most most people out there I see. So you know, again, apartment complexes are not my specialty, but they, I tell you, you can always learn a lot from, uh, from people that specialize in different areas. So that's. The, uh, the 7-Eleven is off of Morgan Ford, um, just south of Arsenal. All right. And if you could put your contact info in the um, chat to uh, Blake, that'd be great. Just for somebody writing it down. <clears throat> All right. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to share with us today? There's not a lot of deals out there necessarily. There's a couple, but there's a lot of people, like I said, are you just kind of sitting around waiting to see what happens with the market. The market kind of looks like, uh, I know Carrie was talking about interest rates and some of that in the last couple of weeks. And they seem like they're kind of maybe stabilized for the maybe the next several months. Um, it's really always hard to say what the Fed will do, but you never know. But right now, there's still ways to make a lot of, uh, a lot of good cash flow deals just based on what we have. And if you have a deal, um, you know, there's there's plenty of money out there for you. Um, okay, Tiffany. Tiffany said you're looking for a, let's see, commercial property in St. Charles area for a nonprofit. Um, okay, you could, if you'd like to unmute yourself, Tiffany, feel free to do so. Um, do you know, you said mixed use, that could cover a lot of different things. Um, is there certain criteria you have? Is there a certain, um, let's see, certain maybe price points or anything like that? Are you looking for a strict cash deal at a discount? Are you maybe looking for something It could even possibly have some uh, partial owner financing or any certain amount of units, things like that. You, I know you may not be able to, to unmute, but that's some uh, some things that are a lot of times are very helpful. Okay, maybe Tiffany can't unmute right now. Um, she's looking for a mixed uh, mixed use for commercial property in St. Charles area. It's for a nonprofit. Um, she her number. For text is 636-299-0085. And Tiffany's email is T-B-A-R-N-H-A-R-T-H-O-M-E-S at gmail.com. Hopefully I got that right. <laughs> I know Laura Lennington has a mixed use. Hers is down in, uh, I want to say Hillsboro. She had one that she was uh, she was telling us about the last week or so. And that, I don't know if you have her information, uh, Tiffany, that's not St. Charles, but that may, uh, I don't see Laura on here today, but uh, she has one down there that uh, it looked like a pretty nice property. I seen the pictures and it looked pretty decent. So that's a good opportunity for somebody. And again, I don't know her price point either. You'd have to talk to talk to Laura about that. All right. Anybody else have anything you'd like to share with us today? Hopefully everybody's got their uh, all their properties ready for the freeze we're supposed to have here. I know when when things go wrong it's never the right uh the right time <laughs> uh tiffany says you're losing your voice okay <laughs> owner financing would be great okay well if anybody hears of anything get get a hold of tiffany and maybe that's why she wants text because she can't talk back <laughs> so
Okay. And Andrew, you'd like a deal finder? Yes, I would be happy to do that. And I got a couple private messages too. I'll be happy out, uh, to send all these out after our call today. The deal analyzer is pretty cool. And Laura went painstakingly put that together for us. And I appreciate her technical work. She's She says she's not a tech person, but she always can put together everything that I ask her to, whether she smiles or not, even though she's smiling right now. <laughs> so... Uh, but that's it's been a it's a great tool um, that you can use. It's a quick analysis. Again, the hardest part, like we talked about, is finding the deal, and that's something we can work more on as the new year goes on. Um, Jim mentioned Chris Cleveland coming to our uh, he'll he'll be presenting um, wholesale deals and finding deals at our February meeting. I highly recommend you come for that too. Um, again, if you're if you're not a member, I recommend you you become a member. You don't have to. You get to come to the first meeting free, and then if you want to uh, attend additional meetings, it's like ten bucks, I think, something like that. Um, we do still have. If you can't make it in person, we do have you covered because we do uh, have our meetings uh, live on Zoom. Um, also, so you can always check the website to find uh, find the link for that. S T L R eia.com st louis uh, real estate investors association and we meet here uh we do meet here every week and i would encourage you just to to meet even if you just come in as a fly on the wall there's a lot of a lot of good um a lot of good veterans here is a lot of good new people we put this together so it it kind of caters to beginners to what i call part-timers which is people there's because we have a lot of people in our group that have a regular full-time job but they um uh, but they they do uh, real estate investing also, and then we have um, so a lot of us that turn into what I call lifetimers. No matter what, we're going to do this forever, and that's just the way it is. So we do kind of have all this put together to where you can come and and come and learn, network, uh, find deals, look for deals, you know, and, and contractors too. I know contractors is a big deal for a lot of us because who do you trust? Who you know? I know a lot of us in you know management companies, everything. They're just you know a lot of us have had some bad experiences. Experiences in the in the past, but it's always nice to see what uh, what others you know have to say about things. So, okay, yeah, there's an, another couple of requests. I'd be happy to, yeah, I'll be happy to send out these requests. Anybody else have anything you'd like to say today? I know we're coming up on the hour here in a couple minutes. So just mark your calendars for our upcoming events. Again, Tuesday, if you could all make it, I highly recommend that. Um, you know, uh, we have, uh, you know, Elizabeth Watkins coming in as the CPA. Then we, if you uh, also watch for Brad's, um, Brad Sumrock's link for his, uh, his forecast coming up on at the end of the month here. Um, if nothing else, I will guess we'll see you all next um next friday see you tuesday and then next